because after it is first introduced, the Vauxhall Crossland has been restyled and has a bold new look. Not only is it ditched the X from its name, but they've also given it some dramatic changes to the exterior and the performance, which are set to offer a massive improvement on the former edition. Thank you so much for watching this video today. If you like new car reviews, then please don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Let's get into it. The updated Vauxhall Crossland features the brand's latest visor front end, which was first seen on the second generation Mokka, which is yet to arrive. It comprises of a blanked off black high gloss radiator grille that flows into a pair of intricate LED headlights. Around the back there's a high gloss tailgate and a set of smoked LED taillights. The model name is now laid out across the rear, a change that seems to be in fashion for many current car brands. In an effort to make the car have some funkier styling to appeal for the target audience, they've added this red stripe that runs along the cars with contrasting colours. They've also upgraded the 17-inch alloy wheels to a gloss black to match the front grille. The Crossland split folding rear bench is retained and can be slid forwards by 150mm to increase boot capacity from 410 to 520 litres or folded flat to provide a maximum of 1,255 litres of boot space. Speaking of boot space, the Vauxhall Crossland's boot is actually unchanged from the outgoing model, but there's still plenty of space. You'll find more space in the boot of this car than you'll find in the Peugeot 2008 and also the Nissan Duke. However, it's not quite as large as you'll find in the Volkswagen T-Cross and also the Ford Puma. Inside the Crossland is very similar to the outgoing model. I've got the same dash layout, same infotainment system. But on this model, I've got some nice changes that just bring that funkiness from the outside inside. And that includes a red dash and also these part leather sport seats with the red lines that run down the middle, similar to what you'll find on the new Vauxhall Corsa. I've also got a good level of equipment in this car, so this model has got automatic lights, automatic wipers, automatic high beam assist, I've got dual zone climate control, I've also got cruise control, lane assist, and on this vehicle I've got sat nav as well as Apple and Android CarPlay which is standard on all of the lower spec models. On this new Crossland, buyers will be offered a decent level of safety technology. Vauxhall says that the revised crossover will come with pedestrian recognition system, along with forward collision alert, and some models will even get a 180 degree parking camera. Space in the rear of the Crossland is very competitive for a car in this class. The really good thing is it's very usable space. So these seats slide forward and backwards, either giving you more space in the boot or more legroom. As you can see, my seat is in my position and I've got loads of legroom and plenty of headroom. These seats also split 60-40, but the middle seat comes down as well, allowing you to either have a ski hatch or in some instances you can spec this up with a couple of cup holders. Another handy thing that it comes with is a little clip to keep your seat belts out of the way, meaning if you keep putting the seats down, you're not going to lose your seat belts. The only thing that I think it would be missing is a couple of USB charging ports. You do have a 12 volt charger, but USBs would be more handy. The Crossland's engines have remained relatively untouched, apart from a few little minor efficiency tweaks. You've got three different power outputs from a 1.2 litre, three cylinder turbocharged petrol. Those are 82 brake horsepower, 108 brake horsepower and 128 brake horsepower. And they can all be paired to either a manual or an automatic box. If you opt for the diesel, it's a 1.5 litre, four cylinder diesel. And that comes in either 108 brake horsepower or 118 brake horsepower but you can only get the 108 brake horsepower in a manual and only get the 118 brake horsepower paired with an automatic. 
It might not have had any engine changes, but it has received some refinements to improve how it drives over the previous model. It's received a new set of springs and a new set of dampeners, as well as a new steering system. So it's a lot sharper and responsive than it was before. The new Vauxhall Corsa got a lot of good feedback over the previous model, and the Vauxhall Crossland drives very similar to how that does. It's now far more comfortable and you don't have to work it quite so hard. Stop-start functionality is already standard on all powertrains of the current car and consumption ratings can be expected to remain broadly similar. Between 45.6 miles per gallon and 47.9 miles per gallon for the petrol cars and 55.4 miles per gallon and 60.1 miles per gallon for the diesels. The car that I'm driving today is the highest powered 120 brake horsepower and it really is a great little engine. It doesn't feel like you're having to thrash it to get it up to speed and when you are going 70 on the dual carriageway it's still reasonably quiet. Some petrols can feel like they're screaming when they really get up to that speed but the Crossland holds its own. Despite the increasing amount of electric vehicles that Vauxhall are going to bring out, the Vauxhall Crossland is probably going to remain as a petrol and a diesel. There doesn't seem to be any signs of a hybrid or an electric one coming. And the main reason for that is they're pouring all of their focus into the new Mocha, which is going to be released in the next couple of months. So if you did want to opt for a larger electric car, then you're probably going to need to opt for the Mocha. The outgoing Crossland X was a great option for people looking for more space over a hatchback with plenty of specification, but it wasn't particularly exciting. Now don't get me wrong, the new Crossland isn't going to set the world alight, but those exterior changes have kind of stood it out from the rest of the crowd. And those refinements to the engine mean that it's now quite enjoyable to drive. In fact, those slight tweaks, I think, now mean that this can take on the big boys for the crossover crown. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you liked it, then please don't forget to give it a massive thumbs up. And if you want to see more videos like this, then make sure you hit that subscribe button. What do you think? Do you like the new styles of the Crossland? Or do you think it looked better before? If you wanted a great deal on the Vauxhall Crossland, then make sure you comment below. I actually work for Quest Motor Group, so I can make sure I can get you a cracking deal. Thank you so much for watching. Until next time, bye.